we connect with a global expert on a major news story. The global shipbuilding industry has been on a decline due to slowing demand, especially amid the coronavirus outbreak and oil prices falling to historic lows this year. However, South Korea's big three shipyards have been thrown a lifeline with a $19 billion order from Qatar Petroleum for liquefied natural gas ships, inking the largest ever single LNG vessel order. On top of that, Tail Shipbuilding and Marine Engineering said Monday that it has won a $748 million deal to build two liquefied natural gas um, plants in overseas. And, well, does this mean a recovery for South Korean shipbuilders? To discuss this issue in depth, we connect on the phone with Mevlin Matthews, an advisor of new business at Wartzilla Voyage Solutions, joining us all the way from New York. Well, my first question to you. Qatar's state-run LNG producer signed agreements with South Korea's big three shipyards on Monday to, to, to secure more than 100 ships through 2027, and this was the largest ever single LNG vessel order. Just how significant is this deal in the industry? Uh, well, good morning, Suyong. Um, I think my answer to that is um, this deal is without any doubt of massive significance. And for this, uh, we need to understand not just what lies behind it, but uh, perhaps also how the future is likely to unfold. So firstly, countries like Germany and the UK have stopped using their old coal power plants during the pandemic, which is roughly two years ahead of their projected schedule to stop using coal. However, rather than using crude oil-based fuels, uh, especially oil in power plants, LNG is much better uh, an alternative which without much fiscal investment and significantly also helps reduce CO2 emissions. Secondly, the shipping industry uh, every year itself consumes roughly 20% of all the oil that is produced as fuel for ships. In terms of efficiency, ships, slow steaming operations and large ship sizes built for economy of scale have more or less reached their peak with distillates of crude oil as a fuel. And finally, meeting fewer environmental targets um, uh, set by the IMO 2050 regulations is impossible without the exist without LNG, because because the existing range of fuel oils cannot comply, and uh, this um, is only the way out. Utilizing existing engine technology, infrastructure, and storage facilities without incurring uh, let's say significant um, capital investment. Other than Qatar Petroleum, nobody else has been brave enough to show leadership by making such a bold move, especially during a pandemic. And I therefore see this as a significant deal, not just for LNG shipping, but for the entire shipping industry as a whole. Right, so you are seeing this shift from crude to LNG. And as you said, it's been quite an encouraging move at this time during this pandemic when shipbuilders especially were going through tough times. But is this big, uh, is this still though, is it big enough for the big three shipbuilders in South Korea to overcome the various setbacks that they've been facing over the years? I mean, especially for Samsung Heavy Industries, which was in the red during the first quarter of this year. The deal is definitely huge because this is one deal that is approximately 60% of the global LNG shipbuilding capacity right up to 2027. The big uh, shipbuilding firms will have to reserve a major portion of the LNG ship construction capacity for Qatar Petroleum alone until 2027. Now, with uh, only about 600 LNG ships trading worldwide, a 100-ship new building order appears to be uh, a plan that is well thought through, considering the current economic climate future regulation and LNG market dynamics uh, in the future. While it will increase LNG fleet by roughly about 17%, the shipyards have already seen their stock prices go up by more than 15%, and that itself is significant. For Samsung Heavy Industries too, this is a, a deal which is significant, despite being in the red in, in the first quarter, as the order alone is going to keep them busy for most part of this decade. The three big shipyards, they um, agreed to, the order was for more than 100 vessels. But what is the possibility that, you know, these orders won't all be fulfilled as in the past? Is there some risk to that? Uh, I, I don't see any risk at the moment. Um, I, I think uh, the way the, the, the world is working, there seems to be um, LNG as the only promising fuel, especially for shipping. 
there is no renewable source that can power ship as economically as we do today. So I don't see any risk as such. It is a bold move for sure, but uh, I don't see any risk that I can identify. Right. Well, what are South Korean shipbuilders actually good at in terms of building LNG vessels and how can they leverage this to sustainably grow in the industry? Um, I have been visiting South Korea for, uh, for about 25 years, um, actually from the middle of mid-90s, uh, first as a seafarer and later in many other roles. My last visit was just a couple of months before the COVID-19 pandemic hit. And what I have seen over the years is tremendous improvement of, in proficiency of workers and efficiency in executing new building projects. What has uh, also improved significantly is not just the quality of ships being built, but also the sophistication of ships in terms of pipes and what, are the and what is being delivered from these massive yards in South Korea. So I, I'm, I'm quite positive about that. Well, the fact of the matter is that South Korean shipbuilders, they are facing growing competition from Chinese shipyards, as are other countries. What challenges do South Korean shipbuilders face and what strengths do you think they should really focus on? Now, uh, shipyards are, uh, especially Chinese shipyards are today uh, where perhaps South Korean uh, yards were about a decade ago. So they are, they are slightly behind in terms of time but they are catching up fast and many are competing in lower cost areas of shipping and shipbuilding. Um, but they are not really known for their innovation or for building advanced ships. But that's not the case with South Korea. The South Korean shipyards, on the other hand, need to continue this trend of having the upper hand in advanced shipbuilding, using emerging technologies and the latest in automation developments and innovation that they need to carry forward uh, into the future. So they can deliver ships that are built future ready and fit for purpose. They need to offer better designs and ships that will meet future regulations more importantly. That's uh, exactly how I feel. Right, it's more innovation needed from South Korean shipbuilders. But for the time being though, LNG consumption this summer, it's forecast to drop 2.7% and that would be the first seasonal demand contraction since the year of 2012. How long do you expect low demand to last and how can the shipbuilding industry survive this, especially throughout the course of the pandemic? Well, I, I think this is a, a blip that has happened, um, you know, recently. Um, so although the forecast is bleak, I personally do not think uh, decline in demand is going to last long, especially because most countries are fast tracking the reduction in the consumption of coal fired power plants and renewables will take much more longer time to transit to. So LNG is the only way out, as, at least as a transition fuel, before going fully renewable, and that is going to take a lot of time. So, so I, I see this as a, as a very, very short durational blip that has occurred. So you see steady growth for LNG and the shipbuilders that are highly invested in these projects. But what risk factors do you think shipbuilders should look out for all the same? There, there's, um, I, I guess the risk factor applies across the industry. And what shipbuilders need to watch out for is how quickly the world is changing around them, especially the maritime world. They no longer have the luxury of time to react to changes like they did in the past. Uh, and they certainly need to be much more agile and quick um, when, 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 if they want to continue uh, as providers uh, of ships to the industry. And amid, My answer is short and sweet. Mm -hmm. And amid low global demand, how do you think shipbuilders can really minimise costs and losses? And also, are there ways to restructure their businesses in order to improve their balance sheets sustainably and going forward? Well, in my opinion, other than mechanisation, shipbuilding has not changed significantly in at least uh, uh, a century. And as the world changes around them, it is no longer sufficient for shipbuilders to do what they always did. They need to identify new ways of providing value to ship owners and operators. And when it comes to their balance sheets, perhaps there is a need to revisit their business models. They need to understand uh, maybe the ongoing changes in the maritime industry. And this can only be done with engaging more closely with other stakeholders in the industry. So they can't operate in a silo anymore. 
they need to be ready and prepared to capitalize on opportunities and trends early on. And going forward, it is those who are agile and proactive and perhaps even creative with financing, leveraging and payments that are going to find success finally. And while South Korea shipbuilders, they've been seeing their market share grow over the years, especially um, Taewoo, te as you know. And do you see, do you see a, well, do you see rosy prospects ahead of them? I, I, I definitely see it. And, and part of the reason that the South, Korean, um, South Koreans have taken over a, a lion's share of shipbuilding from, from the Japanese, for example, is was their proactive um, ways of working and their efficiency and the speed at which they delivered ships. And I think if they continue with that, that, that golden age is going to continue. Uh, and, and China has a long way to go before they can get there. Uh, even in other, um, in other ways, Chinese shipbuilding is heavily subsidized by their government, which may not be visible on the surface. Well, it looks like the good news that we've heard from South Korean shipbuilders last week is going to extend into a rather um, rosy season for them for the time being. Although, as you said, we will have to, um, the shipbuilders will have to keep innovating ahead of competitors around the world. I'm afraid this is where we'll have to wrap up the discussion today. Mevlin Matthews, an advisor of new business at Watsila Voyage Solutions, joining us all the way from New York. Thank you so much for your insights. This is also where we wrap up the show. Thank you very much for watching.